Spoke us at the state information technology agency, CETA, have threatened to march to the Office of Communications Minister Mondle Gungabele as part of their efforts to intensify a nationwide strike. The workers belonging to the Public Servants Association of South Africa, which represents the majority of employees at CETA, are on day two of their nationwide strike following a deadlock over salary negotiations. CETA, or this agency, is the government's IT service provider at Home Affairs, SAS and SAPS offices, amongst others. Let's speak to our reporter, SABC News's economics reporter, Katlejo Lechodi. He's been at the headquarters. A good afternoon to you, Katlejo. What's the latest? A very good afternoon to you, Francis, and to our viewers at home. Of course, uh, we are still here at the headquarters of uh, the State Information Technology Agency, CETA, in Pretoria, where uh, the members of the Public Service as Servants Association, uh, being the workers, are out today on a demonstration. Uh, this marking day two of their nationwide protest. I'm just going to step out of short to show you what is happening here, where we are. Uh, we see the police also on standby, uh, just guarding this facility here today in Erasmus Kluf in Pretoria. The workers are not happy uh, with the employer here around a wage, a wage deadlock at the bargaining forum. Uh, they are saying that uh, they are still on 7.5%, but we see the employer coming through with 5%. Also, uh, the employer calling for concessions here where uh, this demonstration is concerned. As we uh, speak right now, we're hearing uh, from uh, them saying to us uh, that uh, when you look at it, uh, some offices and the delivery of services it's already been affected by these demonstrations and even going to a point of just accusing the employer of negotiating in bad faith where these wage negotiations are concerned. So as the SABC, we felt it prudent uh, this afternoon that we reach out to the employer uh, to get the employer's side of the story in terms of why the 7.5% is just not going uh, to work. I'm going to invite into the conversation as we speak Mr. Tladi Tladi, uh, who's coming through from the State Information Technology Agency we see that uh, the members of PSA continuing uh, with their demonstration on day two. Uh, we know very well that there were negotiations that have been ongoing at the uh, bargaining forum and the employer coming through to say that they can't move uh, from the uh, 5%. Uh, that is the last uh, offer uh, that is on the table for uh, these workers. They're not happy with that. Good afternoon, Katleo, and good afternoon to the viewers out there at home. In the, this is the prevailing situation right now. We are not uh, pleased with the state of affairs insofar as uh, the relationship that we have with the PSA as a recognized union at uh, CETA is concerned. We will spare no effort in order to work towards finding a lasting solution on uh, insofar as uh, breaking this impasse is concerned. CETA for its part has been negotiating in good faith even in the period after we received the notice of intention to embark on the strike action, we have on several occasions invited Labour to come and sit with us around the table to work together with us, with us so that we can co-create a lasting solution insofar as the situation is concerned. For our part, we exercised flexibility because we appreciate the role that CETA has to play at the level of a provisioning government to deliver services to the people of South Africa. Our role is quite critical. We are the back-end office of government insofar as uh, ICT processes and systems are concerned. And if these systems were to go down, which by the way have not, but we are saying that if they were to go down, the impact would be severe on citizens and the country at large. And it is on the basis of that appreciation that we exercised flexibility insofar as the improvement of the offers are concerned. We also appreciate that parties have moved from their original positions. However, we can move up to a particular point and there are reasons behind the decision that we have taken up to this point. We would like to assure South Africans that as matters stand, we have put systems in place in order to ensure that there is no interruption or disruption of services. We have business continuity processes that and structures that are overseeing our operations. And to this date, the industrial action has not had any impact. CETA employs in excess of 3,000 uh, employees. And those who are affiliated members are less than 1,000. And out of that 1,000, not all are participating in the industrial action. 
that from a numbers point of view paints a picture however it is not for us uh, to disrespect the right of the union to embark on an industrial action we continue to say we invite them because there are various options of looking at how we can go beyond this particular impasse one of those is where parties could sit around the table and look at the multi-year agreement the details of which and the principles can be discussed in order to accommodate some of the demands that they are making at this present moment mm. i mean they're saying to us that uh, last year uh, the entity made about 6.6 billion rand in 10 over and they're saying that when you look at it uh, just a 7.5 percent is something that this employer can afford and they're also saying that the cost of living is too high and they're not going to be accepting anything that is not inflation linked is that true uh, that uh, really uh, there's money uh, here uh, but then we not seeing that money uh, just finding its way to uh, the workers uh, that are more or less bringing productivity to this entity the inflation rate is currently not at uh, 7.5 or at 7 percent it's much lower than that in fact it's at around 4.5 and the offer that is uh, being put on the table by the employer is at a 5%, which is marginally higher than the inflation rate as we speak right now. Secondly, when you make a decision on whether or not you are going to accede at wage demands, there are various factors that you take into account, two of which will be A, the affordability, whether or not the business is able to afford this kind of a demand. Secondly, it is the sustainability part of it. It doesn't take you too far if you are going to accede to a demand and for you to run a short mile and not be able to operate long haul. As matters stand, if we were to accede to these demands, we are really participating actively in a situation that could possibly lead to retrenchments and nobody wants to speak the language of retrenchments in South Africa at this present moment. So we have employed a balancing act where on the one hand we recognize the demands of labor and say this is how far we can go meeting you halfway but at the same time you need to take into account a growth and b sustainability of uh, the of the business going into the features into the future so it is a balancing act that we would like to invite labor to look at in that way and not in a one-dimensional view contingency measures uh, in place do we see that uh, those uh, in place as we speak uh, right now because we're hearing these workers that were supposed to be at work saying that uh, they are going at it all the way even uh, planning to march uh, to the office of the ministry of communications uh, for interventions in uh, this regard uh, this meaning that one way or another even if maybe at this point in time uh, there won't be any disruptions or there haven't been any disruptions uh, to your services uh, these workers you still need them uh, to keep uh, optimum services ict services to this government department Departments. We need all employees who are part of our workforce. We, however, appreciate that the situation is not normal. We will operate on the basis of the workforce that we have and certain sacrifices will have to be made operationally in order to respond to the situation on the ground. Hence the activation of our business continuity management processes, the employment of which has led to a situation that has brought operational stability up to this point. We have taken note of the comments that have been made suggesting that there are uh, service disruptions. You will appreciate the fact that even in an environment where there is no industrial action, because you are dealing with the ICT, the wood from time to time be service delivery glitches which we are able to respond to. So it should not be misunderstood to suggest that the glitches that occur are related to the strike action. That is not the case. Mr. Tladitlari, thank you very much, sir, uh, for your time. Coming through there uh, from CETA, uh, just giving us a right of reply when you uh, think of the demonstrations that are taking place. Uh, we hear not just here in Pretoria alone, there's one in Centurion. We're hearing that in various provinces as well, at the borders as well. This is where we're seeing members of the Public Servants Association uh, coming out on these demonstrations. Uh, just uh, Francis letting us in on the fact uh, that it's all systems go where uh, their plans to go to the Ministry of Communications is concerned, but it's a waiting game as we speak right now. Francis, back to you in studio.